More than a month has passed since footage of the maiden flights of China's domestically produced northern and southern sixth-generation aircraft came to light, but the heat of discussion about the sixth-generation aircraft hasn't diminished much. That's because, despite the fact that little new information has come to light in the past month about the Chengfei sixth-generation aircraft, known popularly as the J-36, which has received even more attention in the West. But in contrast, the Shenfei sixth-generation aircraft, known as the J-50, which failed to lead the discussion at first, has instead had a number of new photos revealed on the internet, allowing people to analyze it from other angles. For example, a photo of the J-50 flying at low altitude shows that the wingtip of the right wing of the aircraft has obvious folding compared to the main wing, proving that the J-50 indeed adopts a droopless, full-motion wingtip design, as some Western military experts have speculated. At the same time, this also means that the technical complexity of the J-50 is not lower than that of the J-36, whose overall design looks more radical. In fact, the full-motion wingtip concept was proposed back in the 1950s and is not a new concept. However, this concept has not become mainstream even after 80 years. The reason is that the full-motion wingtip has a series of advantages, such as compact structure, small space occupation, high operational efficiency and cost ratio, and excellent yaw controllability under large angle of attack. But at the same time, the full motion wingtip also exists during the operation. The aircraft's lift, pitching moment and roll moment coupling is large and complex rule of change. To put it bluntly, many performance advantages of full motion wingtip are built on its complex aerodynamic structure. The complexity of the aerodynamic structure is directly linked to the difficulty and stability of the aircraft's flight control system. Various factors constrain each other, resulting in a full motion wingtip in a long time is a huge gain. The risk is also huge design. Even the US GAD 6th generation aircraft did not say that it would be used. This means that Shenfei has taken the first step to lead the world in this field, and behind their step is China's decades of deep expertise in aerodynamic design and writing of flight control systems for fighter aircraft. At a time when countries have begun to build momentum for their own 6th generation aircraft programs, the exposure of this information has directly raised the threshold for participation in the 6th generation aircraft competition. After all, if you look around the world, the only countries that have such profound capabilities are China, the United States and Russia, which are the upper three permanent members, and Russia is also affected by the collapse of the Soviet Union which has suffered a great deal of damage in this field. In other words, the United States is the only country capable of launching a sixth-generation aircraft race with China. Considering the delayed news of the U.S. GAD, China can now be said to have taken control of the future of the skies. This is still only a full-motion wingtip revealed information, and when we look at the J-50 landing gear, it is not difficult to find Sinn Féin may also have other ambitions, that is, the continuation of the J-35 a machine multi-type, air and sea twins, design concept, and at the same time to promote the development of the Air Force model of the J-50 and the ship models. Because the front landing gear of J-50 adopts double-wheeled design, so does the naval J-35, but in the Air Force's J-35A, the front landing gear adopts single-wheeled design. Of course, it's a bit arbitrary to say that J-50 has a naval version just based on the dual-wheel design. After all, the dual-wheel design is often to allow the landing gear to withstand the impact of the heavier fuselage when landing. J-16 has adopted the dual-wheel design, and the overall size in J-16 comparable to the J-50 will have dual wheels is not surprising. The real reason that prompted the outside world to make this judgment is the Wuhan aircraft carrier building that is undergoing renovation. Satellite photos show that the remodeled carrier building is one size larger than the Fujian ship, and wider than the U.S. Navy's Ford-class aircraft carriers. This means that China's new carrier is expected to be even larger than the Ford-class in terms of size and tonnage, with an estimated displacement of 100,000-120,000 tons. However, it is interesting to note that the U.S. Navy is limiting the tonnage of its carriers to 100,000 tons because when they designed the Nimitz and Ford, they thought that 100,000 tons would be sufficient to operate heavy aircraft with a maximum takeoff weight of around 30 tons and that more tonnage would be unnecessary. But on the other hand, if China's new carrier is a new generation, supercarrier even bigger than the Ford class, which is expected to reach 120,000 tons, then this carrier to carry the main carrier aircraft 
the probability is not that the J-15 is slightly smaller than a circle of J-35, but a larger carrier aircraft. Coincidentally, the J-50 happens to meet this criterion. Therefore, it is widely believed that the two types of sixth-generation aircraft will continue the positioning of the J-20 and J-35, that is, Changfiz J-36 to replace the J-20 as the main force of the Air Force, while Shenfiz J-50 to replace the J-35, supplementing the Air Force's demand for sixth-generation aircraft at the same time to provide sixth-generation carrier aircraft for the Navy. And looking into the future, the Chinese Navy does have the need to install the sixth-generation aircraft. The United States still has not bad aviation industry technology. Their GAD 6 generation aircraft sooner or later will be in service. At the same time, in the context of the Chinese Navy's strategy of going out, shipborne aircraft will also sooner or later in the U.S. military's land based fighters go toe to toe. At that time, if China does not have shipborne 6 generation aircraft and the U.S. military is GAD, then in the process of China's Navy to the deep blue, will always have to face the Air Force on the generational gap disadvantage. On the contrary, if you can be one step ahead of the U.S. to install sixth-generation aircraft, especially sixth-generation shipborne aircraft, then when the J-36 flies in China's neighboring airspace to establish the superiority of the sixth-generation aircraft, the new Chinese aircraft carrier equipped with the J-50 will further extend this superiority zone outwards so that the U.S. Navy will lose the carrier advantage.